This Manchester City team is a team that is full of leaders all across the pitch. In, in fact, it, you could argue it's a squad that's full of leaders. Even just looking at their defence, Ruben Diaz, Manuel Akanji, Nathan Ake, even when Ake went off injured, Imerick Laporte comes on. The midfield or the defensive part of the midfield, John Stones and Rodri. The, this is a team that you really wouldn't want to come up against in a, a, a knockout rounds of, of a competition. It, it, is, it does have a different feel to it, to Manchester City teams of old, I think. I know they haven't signed uh, loads of players recently, but it, it just feels as though there's a lot of players who Guardiola has not only improved the ability of or the ability to function within the team, but also just the mentality. I, I think... You know, there are a couple of players who have been brought in and, and they are, you know, just born leaders. Ruben Diaz and Rodri, I think, are the two best examples of that. <clears throat> but even someone like John Stones or Kevin De Bruyne, they, over the past couple of years, they, they see, it feels as though they've really become sort of, uh, you know, men, leaders in the dressing room of this team. So yeah, I I th I think th this Man City team are, are you know a really tough unit at the minute, and I think that is the main reason why they are having the success they are having this season. On top of the success they've had in previous seasons, I think the treble for Manchester City this season is doable. I think they're the favourites to win the Premier League now. They're the favourites to win the FA Cup and Champions League. I think the semi-final is going to be the big one for them because I think both the Milan teams are definitely beatable for a team who are as good as Manchester City. This Man City versus Real Madrid semi-final is going to be an all-time classic. But th this tie between Man City and Bayern, it is one-sided. Let, let, let's be blunt and honest. It, it was set up and made out to be a game, well, two games which were going to be end-to-end, -end, full of action, twists and turns. It just wasn't the way it went. The first leg, Man City were too good for Bayern Munich in truth. And it, that, that's not in terms of uh, even having the ball in possession or, you know, completely dominating. It's just... Man City have improved the efficiency of the way that they attack this season like you wouldn't believe. It's it's just crazy. And I, a lot of that has to go down to Erling Haaland, but I think a lot of it has to go down, also has to go down to the shape of the team that Pep Guardiola has uh, decided to change to with the 3 2 4 1 formation. And it, it, it does really suit some of the players in this Man City team. Jack Grealish, I think, is not a winger. But in this system, he is a wide midfielder. He's not a winger. And what this means is he can focus on what he's actually good at. Because there was too many occasions when Grealish was playing as a winger in a 4-3-3, where Grealish picks up the ball just wide of the box and... He's not very effective in that situation. Whereas if he picks the ball up 40 yards from goal, that gives him the chance to do what he is best at. Run with the ball, skip past a man, or if, if the player decides to foul, he wins a free kick in a dangerous area. John Stones, it, it, it's a massive shame, to be honest, that John Stones hasn't been playing this position all his career because we would be talking about one of the best defensive midfielders in world football because that's what he's playing like at the minute. So, yeah, it, it is a bit of a shame that, you know, for some of these players that Guardiola didn't find or didn't work out that this system would work as well as it does sooner. But, you know, that's, that's the way it goes, isn't it? But for Bayern Munich... Um, 
I mean, it's not great. They're, they're obviously not in as good a position as they were a year ago, two years ago. I, th I think uh, this probably been one of Bayern Munich's worst seasons in the past 10 years. I mean, it, it looks like the uh, Bundesliga is going to go down to the final few weeks of the season. And just when, when you watch them play, they, they don't look as threatening uh, without Lewandowski up front. And they, they, they've they decided that they're not starting players like Thomas Muller anymore. Even their big name summer signing in Sadio Mane doesn't really get started. And I know there's been a whole controversy between him and Leroy Sane, but they did high-five each other when uh, Mane came on for Sane. And... Yes, tonight's performance for Bayern, it wasn't too bad. They needed that first half goal. The chance, the best chance for them came to uh, Leroy Sane. I thought the one-on-one -on -one he had, he had to keep it on target. That There were a couple of other opportunities as well. If Missyala hadn't have, uh, you know, lost his footing slightly at the final moment, he could have got a much better shot off than he did. It, it just it wasn't Bayern's night. Um, Man City was superb defensively, and as I say, that, that back three of Ruben Diaz in the centre with Ikanji and Ake either side just does look really solid. And it, it, it just worked worked for them tonight. And yeah, I, I think this Man City Real Madrid side in the semi final is going to be, well, a, a, a brilliant tie, but. It, I, potentially as good as last year's semi-final between the same two teams because the 4-3 at the Etihad last season and then the 3-1 in the return uh, leg against, uh, well, at, at Bernabeu, two of the greatest Champions League games I, I think I've ever seen, just so good to watch. But uh, yeah, um, Man City right now just look like they are going to take uh, some doing to beat just because of how well they are playing and yeah but anyway it, it back into you know some of the key moments in this game the penalty for Erling Haaland which he ended up skying I think it is a penalty because Upper Meccano's initially got his hands behind his back and then he decides to pull it out when the shot shot comes so it's got to be a penalty really because he is making himself bigger and he does make contact with the ball clearly it is a poor penalty from Haaland but it happens to everyone as we've seen with Mo Salah and Bukayo Saka recently um, and it, he did make up for it with uh, his goal it was a brilliant goal and um, held the ball up well De Bruyne a brilliant pass to find it and find him again and Ife Meccano has just had an absolute nightmare in in uh, th this whole tie, to be honest, because the, the first leg, he just couldn't stop giving the ball away. And this, this time he had an unfortunate slip. Did initially get sent off, but he did get rightly reversed for offside and also slipped at the vital moment uh, for... Harlan's goal, but um, yeah, it's j just not been a, a, a very good time for him this uh, hot, well, game, well, two two games actually against Manchester City for if Meccano, he's just really struggled up against the likes of Erling Haaland. But yeah, Bayern, they, they did get, they did keep pushing in the second half in fairness to them. Uh, they were unlucky with uh, Mat Matthias Tell, who is a young player who I really like. He was really unlucky not to have scored his um, first, but I think it's his first ever Champions League goal. I don't want to say it is because I'm not 100% sure, but he does look like a really good young player. And he, he did look good when he came onto the pitch. And it was only a fraction offside that Kingsley Coman was that denied him from getting uh, the goal tonight. And they, they did manage to uh, pull one back eventually, Bayern, from uh, the penalty spot with Joshua Kimmich. And I have to say, handball, it was not. Um, the ball sort of squirts between... Uh, is that the right word? Squirt? It doesn't sound right, but I'm going to go with it. It sort of squirts between the feet of Sadio Mane and Manuel Akanji. Hits Akanji on the arm. 
and the referees, well, VAR's given the penalty. Not the right decision at all, in my opinion. A uh, shocking decision. And I, I just think it is uh, a bit of a sad indictment in what the game is coming to right now, to be honest. And yeah, the, the other talking point was Thomas Tuchel getting sent off, which, yeah, he, he was losing his call throughout the game. So yeah, no surprises there, to be honest. But yeah, a, a really good, um, you know, do, couple of games for Man City just to prove that they are the creme de la creme of European football right now. Anyway, thanks for watching this video and I'll see you next time.